So the next uh, project for this thing is to square off one of these edges, and the edges are softwood. Uh, they're they're uh, the uh, wood that it was the most recently grown. I say softwood. In most most uh, hardwoods, this uh, sapwood, so called, is a little bit softer. But you know this stuff is already pretty soft, and I'm I'm proposing to just use this because it's going to be painted anyway. Otherwise, we've got to cut you know, an inch and a half off each side. There is a little bit of insect activity in this. Get something to poke with here. You can see here, little, little sawdusty holes. Something has been living in the sapwood. And we can see, here's another one. We can see that better when it's cut off. But I'm not gonna let that bother me either because I think we can fill those places with epoxy and there's just no point in taking something mm -hmm. as good as this and throwing it away. So so it's called sapwood because sap. literally that's the that's, outside of yeah, the, the, the outer running, rings is the where the sap is running at the very outside yeah. edge of it. Um, yeah. and the, you know, it would become this stuff if it if it, if yeah. it lived long enough. And so you can really see the color differentiation between the sapwood you can it does yep. that yeah, almost yeah. always. I, I don't know if I can grab a piece of cherry. I don't have a lot of sapwood here because I try not to buy it. But yeah, um, well, in fact, there's. You don't care about this for the sapwood coming from us. Hmm. So in most wood, the sapwood is a lighter color. Yeah. And uh, in some cases, it's people consider it to be decorative. In some yeah. cases, people consider it to be inferior. Yeah. I've had customers who make both decisions. It's hard, sometimes hard to make it all go away. Um, oh, here's the insect thing. I'm sorry. Here's insect damage. And there were some worries about bringing this into the shop before it was kiln dried, because kiln drying will kill the insects. They, they just get cooked. I looked at this and I thought there hadn't been insect activity in a long time because you can usually see new sawdust around the edges of some of the holes. I stood it up on end here for weeks and looked very carefully at the sides and around the bottom of it and there would have been some sawdust if there were still insect activity because they're kicking it out the holes as they dig holes. So I'm not worried about that. The worry is if I get insects loose in here that get into my own wood piles and start chewing away at my own wood. And it's not to say they would. They may be specific to this uh, species of tree, but I don't want to find out because there's a fair amount of wood in the loft here. Mm -hmm. So next project, square the edge of this so I can uh, establish a flat place. And I will do that over here. Okay. I'm going to make a lot of noise. Do you want headphones? Uh. Blades and I can push this across it and those spinning mm -hmm. blades will square up the edge. But I have to put on the dust collector and all that because this thing... flat place bigger. And I'm going to try to get rid of uh, all around the edge here if I can. pals but again it's not structural and I mm -hmm. don't see a reason to throw it away just making an executive decision about that I didn't ask anybody <laughs> now I'll, I, I'll mark out these pieces I'll do one just to show you how I think about it I mean I'd like to avoid that thing uh, at least in this one, but there will be another one here, and the question is how much is that going to impact 
I don't think that's very deep. It doesn't go through. So this is quite a bit thicker than the finished wood. I'm going to have to planer cut a lot off the surface. I'm going to count that that won't be a problem and I'm just going to take this piece right off here. I have myself this, uh, this beautifully hard to find line that just gives me some idea of where this thing is going to be cut when it ends up a piece of window. It doesn't matter for the purposes of this process because I'm just going to draw it out. Draw it right out. And then that, which is going to be the top of one of these, going over the bandsaw and get, get roughed out. This is a square corner, and I always mark them like that in case the other sides get plain, but I know this is a 90 degree angle if it becomes an issue at some point or other, somehow or other. So uh, the next thing I would do with this is to uh, finger joint it so that it can be uh, joined to the other pieces. Um,